All right, everyone, welcome to today's podcast. Uh, we have Mr. Johnny Hollywood Case. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, man. Pleasure to be on the show. Thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, as everyone should know, we're, what, 15 days or less from uh, yeah. the yeah. Thomas Super Arena. How are you feeling? I feel great, man. Just ready to go out there and, and show everybody and prove to everybody that <clears throat> I'm the next Rising Lightweight Champion. Uh, you know, I know that you've been real focused on that since we first spoke. Um, what is what is these last two weeks like, Johnny? I mean, are, are you done sparring? Today was my last sparring day. <clears throat> yep, I just uh, – now it's just working on staying in the mindset, staying sharp, keeping the weight down, and just uh, – yeah, man, just just happy thoughts, but and mean thoughts uh, all in, all in the right timing. <laughs> is it? Uh, do you find yourself anticipating the moment? I mean, do you wish it was sooner? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like the final two weeks, it's normally just like, oh, just hurry up and get here already. You know, I just want to fucking fight because like, I know the work's done and I'm prepared. Mm -hmm. But no, man, I'm just I've been enjoying every minute of this process. You know, I still got two weeks to. You know, I'm the best fighter I've ever been in my career. I truly believe that. And, you know, now I have two more weeks, to, uh, you know, to keep polishing my, my sword, you know, keep honing that blade. So, uh, it's, it, you know. Did you happen to see the tweet that uh, Shingo sent out about you? I did not. I did not. Check that out uh, after we get off or whatever and all the fans check that out. It was a really good uh, breakdown of how you've been fighting and how you've been improving. And it was just re really cool stuff, I thought, you know, like. I don't know if he's posting them about everybody, but it was it was a good description of uh, of how you've been, you know, here lately. Which I personally, I think that you've gotten better, and that's 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 the goal, right? Absolutely, man. Absolutely right. Uh, you and your uh, you and your lady, I saw. Excuse me. You and your lady, I saw went to uh, the UFC the other night. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. It was here here in town, and how was that? She had she had tickets, so uh, I got to be her, her hot date for the night. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, dude, it was great. Dude. Yeah, it was great. Uh, we had a great time. The fight card was sick. Like, there was, you know, a lot of good entertaining fights on the card. And, yeah, it was good, man. It was a good atmosphere and it, fun it, night it, of fights. What's it like? Is that the – have you been back to some UFCs since you fought there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've been back. Yeah, I've been to – several since being you, you watched know, since, her as well i'm sure yep i've watched uh two of her fights and you know multiple other teammates and ex-teammates what is it like watching your girlfriend fight fuck dude it's uh it's it's super nerve-wracking more so, so like i don't even get nervous for my fights i mean my brother's fought my uncle's fought i've never gotten nervous for any anybody in my entire life to fight you know what i mean and uh, the first time, you know, the first time that she fought, I was like, I was kind of going crazy. I didn't even notice. You know what I mean? Like, I had, like, anxiety all week. I'm like, man, what the hell's going on with me, you know? <laughs> and then uh, I was like, oh, yeah, Emily's fucking fucking. <laughs> yeah, Emily Whitmire, for anyone who doesn't know, a uh, super talented girl. Um, I, I just asked that because I got a couple friends that, you know, I'm friendly with, and, and I, I can't stand to watch them fight, especially sitting here at home watching them fight in Japan. Um, have, have you ever watched her not live on TV? Uh, no, I have not. No. I bet you that would be a worse experience, you know, because at least you're there. Yeah. Uh, I, I, Being held yeah, for sure. No, yeah, that's definitely. That what would go about your friends? Do, do you feel the same way about your friends when they fight? Or, I, I mean, yeah. Not at all. No. Not, not at all. No, I, but that's the thing, too. I always expect, I always expect everybody to win. You know what I mean? Because I know I train with them, and, and Emily's no different. I know she's gonna, I know she's gonna go out there and win because she's a great fighter. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like knowing her and being close to her and loving her. Like I don't want to see her get hurt either. You know, I don't want right. to see her get punched in the fucking. I don't want to see her, you know, like in there suffering. And you know, and there is a great deal. Like you know, the fighting, fighting the best fighters in the world, you're gonna suffer a little bit. You know, everybody suffers a little bit in a fight. You know what I mean? I think that's just the thing. Like you know, my friends, my brothers, my uncles. It's like I know, like like they're they're good they can suffer like i know that they're tough enough to push through but it's like when you love somebody and like you know you just want to protect them and be there for them and you know basically just protect them from all pain and evil you know and so it makes it difficult watching them well, having to dig deep and fight through those get those hard moments 
I bet, man. And, uh, you know, what makes me think of something is like, you know, I hate to use her as an example, but like Jessica I, right? When she got head kicked by Valentina Shevchenko, her loved ones had to, I mean, if you're watching that on TV and you hear the baseball bat sound, I just think that would freak me out. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's a different, it's fuck, fight game's a crazy thing, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I asked you last time, but how, how long do you plan on fighting, Johnny? I mean, as long as you hold up, or do you have a set time? No, dude, I don't really put, I don't really put a, an end date on it. You know, I feel like I'm just now 30 years old, and I'm just now in the prime of my career. You know, so I think as long as this is fun, I'm enjoying myself, I'm winning fights, and... Uh, you know, not really taking too much damage to the head. And I think, yeah, man, I'll do this. I'll do this as long, as long as my body will take me, as long as, uh, you know, as, as long as it's still fun and I'm still rocking. And, and from talking to you and stuff, would it be fair to say that you'd like to use the rest of your time in Ryzen? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, where it comes down to now, man, is money. Uh, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be about stacking for my future and my kids' future. So I would like to stay with Ryzen. I love Ryzen. Ryzen's the shit. It's been a great platform for me. Plus like the rule set and just everything about it, you know, the show, the showmanship they put into their shows and just, you know, but it, it when it comes down to it, who's going to pay me the most. So if that's yeah, Ryzen. It makes sense, whatever. man. You got to, got to set yourself up. You know what I mean? Cause you know, fight game's so crazy that, shit you, you know who knows what who knows how your knees come out of this or you you know you just never know right never know there's no there's no promises in anything and the only promise is that uh you know it's a brutal fucking it's a brutal sport to be involved in <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yes. a promise uh so i mean without uh, i know you don't want to give away too much information but uh if you win this lightweight tournament or grand prix will that extend your contract just from winning it or do you think they'll offer you a new one how does that work yeah so i don't i don't exactly know so they're actually i only have one fight left on my contract and i have two fights for this grand prix tournament okay. so it's like i'm already you know they kind of they kind of rolled the dice there so it's like you know when i go out there and i win this title then it's like okay well if you want me to stick around you're gonna have to pay me a little you know mm -hmm. since since oh. now i won all of my on every, every single fight of my contract Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of gives me the leverage for negotiations. So, well, and I think um, we'll see. Yeah. If they, if they, oh, I'm sorry, if they're pretty well, fair and they're reasonable and they, mm -hmm. no. So, I mean, I'm just saying as, as long as they're fair and as long as they're reasonable and they'll, uh, you know, they're good, they're willing to pay what a champion's worth. Then yeah, I don't have, I, I don't see any issues with staying and rising and, and just there, uh, keep cleaning out the division. Was there a period where you could have signed a contract before this last bout and you chose not to? No, nothing's okay. nothing's come up yet. But uh, so a lot of people don't know, but I I was actually in the very first season of the PFL tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't get I didn't get to have any fights in the uh, in the postseason, but the in the final in the tournament, I was number eight seed. I got in. I fought number one seed, and um, had a draw with him. And then he went on and went and won the whole thing. And uh, yeah, I believe he's in the finals again this year. But um, so so the goal was I was only gonna have you know because the PFL is a season it's from right. like May to New Year's Eve, and uh, you know there was some that that was a long way out for me you know since I got cut from the UFC it was hard to find fights like I was pretty much had one fight in like two years so I was ready to get a fight and get busy and uh, ended up signing one fight with Ryzen against Yachi and uh, I won that fight and you know Ryzen was like hey how about we sign you to a deal you stick around and you know. Because so they liked me, so at that point it was like I, I'm gonna go with the 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 sure thing, you know, with Ryzen. I signed the contract, and then uh, yeah, the rest is history. And now with that, so that you're at the end of your first contract with Ryzen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! So they gave you what was it? Four four fights or what? You... Four fights. Yeah. yeah, it was four fights. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and what what was the reason again that the guy moved on, and because you had a draw, just because he was the number one seed. Yeah, so the way, the way that platform works, it was a uh, – so, again, with the PFL, you fight twice in one night. Mm -hmm. But the first fight is only a two-round fight. And the format goes um, – so he won the very first round. He took me down. He kind of controlled me and out-wrestled me. I kind of had a slow start. You know, I didn't really get going until the second round. And then the second round came. I won the second round, had him hurt. Um, 
and then that was the end of the fight you know I, it feels like the fight just got started but uh, the, so the way that the the way that that works is if it's a draw one round one round two whoever the winner of round one is advances so it was kind of like man it kind of just all I did was kind of in my opinion it promoted somebody to just go out there and get a takedown and try to like just lay and lay and pray and try not to isn't Invicta you know. like that too? Isn't there another tournament sort of? Like that? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. But uh, I want to say I think that the, their Phoenix Rising series. Uh, I mean, I've talked to somebody, and I'm pretty sure that it was it was the same kind of deal. It was it was a lady I talked to. I just can't remember, but like you said, it encourages someone to go out there and take you down in the first round. I think it should be the second round that decides it, right? <laughs> I mean, agreed. <laughs> uh, yeah i mean whoever wants the second or just do one 10 minute round or right. do three three minute rounds you know like i think there, there's so many different ways that you can you can do that format that's going to promote guys to go out there and fit and fight to the finish you know instead of just thinking oh i gotta i gotta i can take a round off if i win round one i can just kind of take a round off so and, i don't know uh I think the easiest, is, the is easiest is. solution is just to let's stop with this stupid unified rules thing that's not actually unified at all right I mean, you go to some states and you don't know right. what the hell the rules are. And, 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 you know, the whole idea of not being able, like, you would never be able to do what you're about to do at the end of the year here in America, right? Couldn't do it, yeah. And, and, and that's just, that's the yeah, sure. Agreed, agreed. So, but, man, what a freaking honor to be able to be a part of something like this, you know, fighting and rising and, you know, two full fights in one night. That's some, you know, that's some samurai – Bushido kind of shit, you know, like like path of the warrior, you know. That's it's not just going to be about skill. It's gonna, it's going your your will, your 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 heart, everything's going to be tested here, you know. So yeah, and, just, and it, wow, it's it, such a great opportunity. You kind of touched on a little bit, but how much, how much of it uh, goes into like wanting to finish the fight early because your opponent might finish the fight early. Is that, is that going to be a thought in your mind? I mean, if you've got a guy hurt, are you going for it more or are you just kind of staying in your zone, whatever happens? Yeah, man. I mean, I'm just going to go out there and fight. There's a lot that can happen. Obviously, you know, if I can get a quick finish, then that's going to be always be the goal, you know, but I'm also, I'm not foolish. You know, Topic's really a good fighter. Mm -hmm. I'm not foolish enough to think that I can just go out there and force an early finish. You know, I think he's crafty. He's, you know, he's, he's a guy that's going to have to be tactically fought, you know, and if my tactics can put him away early, then fuck yeah, awesome. But, you know, at the same time, it's going to play out the way it's going to play out. You know, I'm just going to go out there and focus on winning the fucking fight by any means necessary. Right. You know, by any means necessary. Then, then we'll worry about the next one, win the fucking fight by any means necessary. So yeah. it's really just, you know, there's so many variables that could, that could roll out that night that you just you can't possibly plan for. So all you can really do is – prepare yourself to be the baddest motherfucker on that night. There's four, right. you know, there's, there's four guys in the tournament. I'm going to fight all three of them to get that title for that. That's what right. it takes. So do you draw it, inspiration man. from, from watching somebody like Horiguchi when he got cut, you know, and had to get sewn up in the back or, or King Mo when he, you know, won it, do you draw inspiration from the previous Grand Prix? For sure, man. I mean, yeah, always been a fan of pride and the Grand Prix and all that stuff, but, uh, yeah, man, it just – I think just, you know, there's, I have a lot of things that inspire me, you know, but uh, one thing I know uh, – one thing that keeps me – that keeps me positive and keeps me motivated and keeps me, like, you know, like just really, really encouraged and really focused is just knowing that I've been training my ass on. I'm the, I'm the best version of myself. And I know that on fight night, I always come to bring it. You know, I, I have no problem in going there and fighting with anybody. You know, no matter what's going on in my life, no matter how I feel, I can step in that ring and just shut it out and just fucking put it on the line. And, uh, y you know, that gives me all the confidence in the world to just go out there and, and do just that. Well, I saw your confidence sky high. We talked before your fight with uh, Souza, of course, right? It was just, you know, a few, few weeks or yeah. something before that fight. And I saw your confidence really high. And to be honest with you, it was like the majority of people that I knew were kind of picking him because he hadn't lost yet, right? Mm -hmm. And and his, right. his, I mean, we had talked about getting into his guard and stuff, and you got a little bit into his guard, slipped right out of there. I want to ask you about that uppercut or the shovel hook uppercut, though. Did you feel that it was a clean hit right away? Yeah, yeah, I felt like it was a little like I felt it dig like that little percussion like womp, 
Like when you hit somebody, it's like a little bit of like, it's like, it's an energy transfer is what it really is. And you can kind of, you know, you can feel that, you know, and it was a really short punch, man. It was probably only like three or four inches, but you know, the way that I, the way that I threw it and the way I was planted, it was like, you know, he was only falling four inches, but that four inches was like a fucking the, the corner of the coffee table. You know what I mean? So it's just, it doesn't take much if you're planted, you can just bunk really transfer that energy. So I knew, I knew when he shot in, yeah, I knew I caught him. Um, but I didn't really, I, I did, it wasn't a big like connection. It was just my top, my top knuckle hit mm -hmm. him right in the eye socket. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, it wasn't a satisfying thud. It was just like a whomp. <laughs> uh, did he, did he say anything to you after the fight? Cause I know that he was thinking that it was an eye poke, right? Yeah, no, nah, he, he, he ended up saying, uh, I forget what he said. He said something on, on social media. He was just like, He's like, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. He's like, honestly, like, I fucking panicked. You know, he hit me and everything went black and it felt like a shock right through my head. You know, he's like, I panicked. I tapped out and uh, turned out he, I think he had a fracture. What was that? You cut out. You there? Yeah, yeah. That was weird. That was weird. It, it, that was he had weird. a fractured what? Uh, he ended up having a fractured orbital bone. He ended up yeah. breaking his orbital bone. Damn, so. from that short of a shot, too. That's crazy. Um, and so when you saw him go down, you were about to give him a nice soccer kick. You know, <laughs> and I think he even threw No, it. I landed, but I did land the kick. Yeah, well, and uh, I mean, was that the first time in your career that you had done that? I don't recall you doing that against Kitaoka or Yachi, right? Yep, first soccer kick, man. First soccer kick landed. <laughs> Uh, I, I've been putting some people onto your fights, and I showed a, I showed somebody the Satoru Kitaoka fight, and they were like, "How many times is he gonna elbow him <laughs> until this guy quits?" And I said, "Kitaoka won't quit, right? They'll drag him back to his school. He'll come back." Not a, not an ounce of quit in that man. Heart of a lion. If, if you were, and we kind of talked about all the possible matchups, and you did mention Tofik as a, as a being a possible challenger. Do you think, uh, just looking at the four, maybe from the outside, do you think that he's the toughest? Um, I think like for tactics, as far as tactics, he's the one that's gonna that's gonna potentially inf uh, inflict the most damage because he's got he's got those powerful kicks. He's oh. got that uh, that big that big kickboxing. So as far as like tactically speaking, he's going to be um, the biggest uh, the, the biggest challenge. Yeah, I would say, for sure, for sure. Um, but we'll see, man. That guy's heart's never been tested. I've never seen. He's he's the kind of fighter that he's that bully kind of front runner type fighter. He goes out there, he gets set, and he, once he gets going, guys fucking tend to fold. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> I we haven't really seen. You know when when guys get out there and they turn the heat up on him how how he responds so uh, i haven't seen all of his fights but i was most impressed with uh darren crookshank's fight with him right right you know i mean in comparison to somebody like damian brown who i respect and he he walks through shots i you know i was pretty baffled at what tofik did to him he he punished him but i think uh and, and so just leading back to that have you watched any film do you watch film do you let your coaches do it Oh yeah, no, yeah, oh yeah. I've watched, I've watched all of every one of his rising fights, and even some of his fights back in Russia. And and uh, was the Krukshank fight the closest? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, yep. I yeah, I think that was like the the fight where. But even again, like you know, tactically, Krukshank was playing was was not doing the right things tactically. He was he was fighting a losing battle. He was fight. He was playing into to Tofik's. Um, strengths in my opinion you know what i mean and and crookshank is a shorter kind of guy you know he, he he's more favorable of a kickboxing karate taekwondo style but uh he you know the range is it was off and he just didn't fight the right fight tactically i don't think you know and I, yeah. I, 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 yeah i really like crookshank and the way he fights and his style i felt like both guys were kind of tentative in that fight you know what i mean i, I yeah. mean it was a super close i don't remember if it was a split decision but it was a super close fight and I, I was a little bit surprised that we didn't see Cruikshank get into his normal, you know, I'm going after it mode. But he had just got submitted by Damian Brown by making a mistake. So, you know, that's understood. Yeah.
Um, do you know if you're if, what where you're at on the bout? Are you guys fighting like first, second, third, something like that? I'm, no, I'm pretty sure it's like we're either the first or the second fight, and then we'll be the main event. I mean, that oh, would okay. be my It'd be the main event. That would be my guess. Yeah. So the winners of one and two will fight in the main event. I'm pretty certain of it. I mean, that would make most sense, but. We'll yeah, I think that's how they did it with Horaguchi, and I know there's some other titles on the line, but that would make the most sense. And again, Ryzen lasts eight hours sometimes, so you never know, right? Exactly. Uh, are yeah. you? Uh, when do you fly out? So we fly out here on the 27th. So are you going to go to Bellator in Japan? Possibly, we'll see. I know, I know, like there, I know quite a few fighters that are going to be on the card. Some of them are ex-teammates and shit. Um, so yeah, possibly it'd be good to go, but we'll kind of see, like. You know, I might. I think I'll be cutting weight that day. So if I'm kind of just tired and grumpy, then I'll probably just stay in and stay away from people. So. Right. But will you watch it? You think still? If, you yeah. Know. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. It's gonna be a good card, man. I'm. I'm excited for Yachi and uh, Usakeda. Yeah, yeah, Roto. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a good that's a good fight. Uh, you know, I wonder how those post limbs are gonna work. I talked to Jamie Hinshaw, who's fighting uh, Kana Sakura, and she said that in her contract. It, it said that they were fighting in a ring. I'm in a ring, but yeah. but there's been rumors of it being in the cage too. Do you have any insight on this? No, I haven't heard. I know a lot of uh, like in Asia, particularly, they prefer the ring. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They prefer because it. Well, they Bellator kinda... is taking their cage for the main card on Paramount for Fedor and Rampage and shit. They they confirm that that's in the ring in the cage. Oh, yeah. Well, then I don't know why they wouldn't just do the whole fucking card in the cage. Then. I, I don't understand that either. And I know that. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to ask you was uh, elbows. Did you have to accept elbows before your first fight with Satoshi? With, with Satoshi? With Satoshi? No. So every so we haven't, we're not allowed to do elbows in the Grand Prix tournament. Oh, really? Wow. No yeah. elbows at all. No. Not even in the it, final. It, it, Nope. Well, I don't know yet. I haven't heard the rule set us about, about that yet, but they said for sure um, the first round of the tournament were against Satoshi and then probably, in, you know, the semifinals, no elbows as well. So they just don't want the cuts. And even, I mean, even my first fight, my first fight with uh, Yachi, there was no elbows there either because he didn't want, he, he didn't agreed want to no that. elbows. Right. Yeah. And then Kirioka, we agreed to elbows. Clearly. I saw, yeah, I saw what happened to him. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> clearly yeah. you agreed to him maybe you didn't agree to that many though yeah yeah exactly <laughs> um and in Ryzen, too, you could do that you can do 12 to 6 on your elbows so that that really fucking opened up the, a lot of positions where i could strike from why do you think johnny that there's so many people against the rise and rule set i mean even like big john mccarthy is not you know he's a kind of a spearhead as far as rules here in america right he helped he helped build them, and he's really against like grounded knees, for example, which is just baffling to me. Yeah, man, I don't know. I mean, you know, a guy standing up on the feet and getting his head slant pulled down and slammed into a knee. In my opinion, you know, I guess there's the barrier where your head doesn't really, keep, you know, move through. But at the same time, man, I've seen way more vicious head kick, standing head kicks, standing overhand punches, like elbows I've seen on the ground, elbows on the ground, dude. I mean. At the end of the day, the goal is to shut off the machine. You know what right. I mean? Shut right. your opponent's machine down. So whether it's choking them unconscious or knocking them unconscious, like, should be all fair game in my book. You know what I mean? As long as we're not pulling each other's eyeballs out and fucking, you know, biting their necks and shit. Right. And, right. Uh, well, you know, I think that, you know, right. one of the things may be the, the little area between the cage and the, and the canvas, right? Um, I've seen a few people get their ankle kind of stuck there. I'm sure maybe it's happened to you before in a cage. There, in some Pretty. cases, have more space. So maybe I can understand like a, a head stomps not being legal in a cage. But as far as the as far as the grounded knees, I feel like it's just favoring wrestlers, and all that it would do is make MMA more exciting. I agree. Yeah, th that's the thing you see in Ryzen that you don't see in American MMA. Like in Ryzen, those positions aren't very fucking often because guys know they're going to get fucking knee in the head if they want to lay there and try to relax and take the round off. You know what I mean? American MMA, you see those positions all the time. Why? Because guys can't get knee in the head. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it totally changes the dynamic of the fight too, you know? Well, and you know, uh, Deep Impact, did you happen to catch that over the weekend? I did not. Uh, mm -hmm. Koji Takata fought. He's the champion, uh, you know, in your weight class, the lightweight. Um, so, you know, you may see him in Ryzen one day. But uh, I think he's fine, actually. But anyway, he, uh, I think it was his fight. 
I got him in an arm bar and he stood up out of the arm bar and in UFC, Bellator, everything, that fight's probably going to be over. Well, not in Japan because you're going to get stomped in your face, right? I mean, yeah. it's, just, it's just so many different variables. And as a fan watching, it just makes it so much more exciting. But it also, there's, it doesn't favor anybody. It doesn't favor the striker. It doesn't favor the wrestler. It, it's, it's a fair fight is how I feel, you know? Agreed. Agreed. Um, Back to the UFC for just a second. I wanted to ask you if, if anything surprised you on that card. No, I mean, no. The two, I'll tell you the two fighters that really impressed me, you know, and that was uh, Brandon Moreno, the uh, baby assassin. His performance was just – Kai was, Cara France? Yeah, against Kai Cara France. You know, he just made the adjustments and just, man, it was, his hands looked so good. And he was trying to fucking finish the fight from start to the final bell, you know. He was up two rounds – going into the third and he didn't let off the gas a second you know so mm-hmm. you, as a fighter as a fan you got to appreciate something like that you know also uh that chase hooper kid oh, that 45 yeah, 45er, yeah. Looks, the little kid looks like he's straight out of high school i think yeah. he's like 20 years old like but man he took a tamer fucking corked him with the right hand and dropped him had looked looked like he you know should have had him well he was hurt dropped him with it but that kid kept his composure and kid got back into the fight, ended up getting the sick, you know, rear naked choke submission. So showed a lot of heart, a lot of skills and, and you know, toughness that, in that. That's interesting because I was, you know, Tamer, the brothers are, are tough dudes. You know what I mean? And Very tough guys, yeah. what, what about the fact that uh, you were there, you stayed for the main event? You, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. What did you think about the fact that one judge had Colby up three to one? In uh, any world that that could happen? I don't know, man. Like, I know I, it was a really close fight from what I was seeing. I knew Usman had won a, won a round or two, but I, I felt that Colby was, was winning the fight on the scorecards up, uh, up until the point, until he got caught and then got, you know. But, uh, man, that was a weird fight. I just, meant, that, I just that, meant the disparity between Colby having 3 1 and Usman having 3 1, and, you know, and then the other judge was even. I had, oh, it, more, yeah. oh, I had yeah. it more along the lines of even. I, 3 1 was a stretch either way for me. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, for both of them. Yeah, three one on both of them. Yeah, I don't think it was like I could guess like two and two for sure. You know, and but, is, that, uh, is that something that you uh, also probably don't miss because you just talked about uh, guy you know Moreno who fought Kaikara France not not letting off the gas pedal. I see that so often in the UFC. Um, do you, do you think maybe open scoring would fix that? I think open scoring would be perfect. I think I think at the end of every round. The judges stick up a paddle, right? Uh-huh. Okay, who, who won the round, red or blue? Boom. Okay, now we know. That's I just won that round. Now come out here, we'll fight the second round. Okay, now you know going into the third round, fuck, I'm down two rounds. I got to go fucking turn it on. You know what I mean? Like, I think, yeah, I definitely think, like, they, it should just be, like, posted at the end of the round. Who won, blue or red? Boom. Okay, perfect. Got that round. What? Like, and see, that's why I think that Japan is ahead of the curve as far as everything. You got deep that show this weekend. They they use five judges, right? So they don't judge it. Hell like, yeah. They don't even judge it like Ryzen as far as the whole fight, but they use five judges. So it's you're bound to get it a little closer to right. You know what I mean? We're seeing the totally. same problems in boxing. We're seeing the same problems in so many combat sports. And that's a good idea. I never heard the paddle thing. And that's a simple way. You don't have to, you know, even announce it over the loudspeaker hold the damn paddle up and everyone could see right done yeah uh, exactly that's the way it should be man uh and, and so uh so i assume you guys had a real good time what would you guys do afterwards you guys go out anything fun yeah we went out with uh some of the ufc performance institute employees we we're just kind of just went out to a little after party kind of hung out for a little bit we didn't stay out too late since i'm in camp i was hungry and kind of getting tired but we stayed out till probably midnight or one o'clock or whatever and it was good, man. I just had fun and shot the shit. It's got well, fun. Uh, I, uh, I don't want to keep you too long. I know it's late there and stuff, but uh, I, I want to ask you about a couple more things here and get to a couple fan questions. What uh, What are your perspectives on fights of the night for the Bellator Japan card? I don't know if you know the whole card yet, but. Um, you know, I, 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 I guess uh, I think I'm going to go with Yachi and, and – uh, Hirota, dude. I think, honestly, that's going to be one of the best fights on the card, in my opinion. That's the one I'm looking forward to most. You know, I mean, Rampage, Rampage and, and uh, Fedor is going to be a sick one, too. I mean, without a doubt. That's just because that's history, you know. And uh, 
well, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that that fight. But I honestly think skill skill for skill, it's going to be a better performance with Yachi and Hiroto. You know, and I'll, I'll point out a mine in case anyone cares, not like Mr. Johnny Case cares, but uh, Kana Watanabe against uh, um, Lara Joanne, right? I don't know if you've watched yeah. the Kana fight, but she is a mm -hmm. beast, man. I, I, did you Have you ever seen her in person, anything like this? This girl's built. Yeah, it's or is she straw weight or what weight is she it? She is uh, 25, I think. Um, flyweight, okay. She, yeah, flyweight. So she's fought in Deep Jewels as well. Um, I want to say, I can't remember who she fought in the last Ryzen, but she is, uh, she's eight or nine and oh. I think she has one draw against uh, Sugiyama, who of course is, uh, I think, Keitaro's, Nakamura's wife, right? Anyway, uh, yep. you know, and so she, but she's getting better every fight and she is just tough, man. I mean, that's, that's my potential fight tonight. Her and uh, Aishimitsu, the crazy beat girl, Miyu Yamamoto's uh, little protege. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She had yeah, that fight with uh, Tabitha Watkins. I, I think you fought on that card, didn't you? Was that the card you fought on? I think so. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Anyway, as far as uh, so, so, so the night of the the day of the rising, what, what do you guys start at like one o'clock in the day? Yeah, something like that, dude. Real early, real early, because we have like a big open there? ceremony. I think last time we got there, it was like yeah, we got there at like two, and I was later on the card. You know, I was uh -huh. like mid seventh fight, I think, or whatever. But, and but yeah, how many, how many people do you, will you have there? Is your lady going? Uh, yeah, so actually, uh, I'll have both my coaches there. Uh, Emily will be there. My mom and my dad, I, I flew out as well. So yeah. I'll have uh, lots of attendance. Plus, I got, I got some good friends in uh, Japan that are going to be they are going to okay. come oh, support Hollywood, bro, flying your parents out. That's great. Have, have, Hell they yeah. ever been, have they ever been to Japan to see you fight? No, they've never been out of the country. And I figured it's not every day that your, your son fights for a world title. So I figured, you Shoot know. For that, bro. That's great, <laughs> man. And what about Emily? Has she seen you fight there? Has she ever been with you? She's never been. She's never been to Japan. So it's it's going to be definitely be awesome to finally have her there as well, you know. Okay. I've been going out there and just fucking, you know, having the best year of my life, and she hasn't she hasn't been able to be there yet. So definitely means a lot that she's going to be there this fight. When, These two. when you fought last time, did she watch it live? Uh, yeah, she did. Yeah, she watched it on so, Fight TV. So she was up all night because that was late. You fought at like 4 in the morning here. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, she was up in Oregon, so oh, it was. Uh, oh, good. And I, I, she, was she nervous? Did she? Did you call her right after? Is that something that you do? Or yeah, no. I ended up. She just ended up texting. Uh, you know, good job. Like, but I'm, I'm out. I'm beat. You know. So it was because after you fight, you know, it's you got to go get checked by the doc. It's like another hour or so. So by the time I got to my phone, you know, she was like, "Sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't stay up." So all right. Um, and, and so how you expect to get there? maybe a couple hours early, uh, earlier than the event starts because you may be up first or on the card. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure, I'm sure they're going to have us there probably by, you know, 10, 10, 11. Have you ever fought so, that early in the daytime before? I have. Yeah. So my very first fight in, uh, in the UFC was in Japan and they catered to uh, American time. So I, I think I fought at like 9 a.m. 9 a.m. I fought at uh, my very first fight in Japan. So. And I, I don't know if I – I don't believe I asked you this either, but what was – you got cut from the UFC, right? You, you didn't finish your contract? Yeah, no. I got released, yeah. Why, and why yeah. was that? Um, long story short, man, it was just, uh, you know, just business. Like, the, the, the UFC didn't like um, doing business with the management that I had, and I was kind of – I was collateral damage, you know? One way of not ever have to deal with that guy is just fucking get rid of me. So, it's kind of unfortunate, kind of cutthroat kind of fucking left you know bitter taste in my mouth but are you man. still with that management i'm not no okay uh, i just uh, you know i don't want to pry too much i just wonder because uh, i spoke to jared brooks recently you know monkey god of course he's gonna be throwing bananas at everybody um but he uh you know i wondered the same thing because you guys both did well in the ufc it's not like you know you were getting washed or anything you know what i mean and so uh, i've just had a bunch of fans ask right. me that and fans have this weird misconception that if you're not in the UFC or if the UFC hasn't got you, then you must not be that good or some bullshit. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, dude. And that's so fucking stupid too. Like, but you know, in a way, like I was that way too. You know what I mean? It's like you get it built up in your head that the UFC is like this mecca. And in a lot of ways, I mean, it is, you know, as far as like having the, the 
the vast roster of of world class fighters. You know, I mean, you go to Ryzen, there's like three, there's four, you know, three or four world class fighters per weight class. The UFC's got like the top twenty or fucking right. world class fighters. So but, but they have the depth mm -hmm. of of the talent. That's all. I, I they don't agree. pay the best. They don't, I would agree, except it's like I, I'm, I put people on to fights, you know, for geez, decades now. And, I mean, even me personally, I've gotten to know more of your personality, regardless of these podcasts, from watching you in Ryzen than I ever did from watching you in the UFC. I knew who you were, but, it, you know, you're just not showcased there. I didn't, I didn't ever hear your entrance music. I, you know what I mean? There's, there's totally. There. And so, so I think that uh, for fans' sake, I mean, that's why I'm trying so hard to promote everything because for fans' sake, Ryzen has got the best show on earth. You know? I agree. With, no, without a doubt, man, 100%. And I've had my, head, my coaches, you know, who, coach, who re, you know, coach fighters all over the world in every promotion, UFC, all across the board, even they have said, dude, with, like nothing holds a candle to Ryzen, you know, nothing. And, I, you know, it, I agree wholeheartedly. Like those opening ceremonies, dude, just the way they fucking – dude, Ryzen's where it's at, man. It's lit. That's And, and we so do fun. talk about the opening ceremony and the adrenaline that it gives you. Do you feel like uh, it's going to be helpful because you're fighting so soon after the opening ceremony? Yeah. I mean, dude, come fight day, I wake up, I'm ready to fucking go any day. You know what I mean? Any, every second of that day, you know. So I'm just super happy, but I'm super froggy too, you know. So do you, definitely. Do you sleep pretty good the night before? like a baby yeah because it's the night you know that morning you make weight you know and that's a that takes it out of you you know and then you just eat and get bigger all day you stay up as late as you can and just eat and eat and eat until you're just fat and happy and then snooze out like a like a hibernating bear dude and wake up ready to fucking kill <laughs> oh yeah and you know i'm not to put any pressure on you but it's like uh you know you're one of the best in the world here at this and that's why i was saying the thing about the ufc thing is if people really wanted to see if that was true then let's push the UFC to send over one of their guys. I was telling someone the other day, imagine Conor McGregor in this tournament. He'd get washed. I'm sorry yeah. to tell everybody, but that's the truth. With these rules, with the ring, it's, you know, it's a different game over there. Um, but so, so I assume you haven't, you probably don't think too much about your walkout music, things like this, because you're so serious about this, this time. Totally. Um, and, and whereas, you know, if you're just fighting one fight, and, you know, it doesn't mean as much because you're also fighting for a contract. I mean, I think they're, you know, they got to sign you no matter what. And, you know, it's, you're one of the most exciting fighters on the roster. That's how I felt about Cruikshank, too. It's like, there's certain guys, you got to just sign them. I don't care. <laughs> you know, and that's, what, that's what's cool about Ryzen, too, is it's not always win-loss. You know what I mean? I look at Minowa, man, back in Pride. He was 8-8 eight and eight at one point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so I think as long as you're exciting, but I wanted to ask you about the fans. Do you find that what I just said about your personality and stuff, do you find that the fans are appreciating you more than absolutely? Yeah. I've noticed fight to fight. I mean, just in the last, in the last year, my fan base in Japan has grown tremendously, you know, and uh, they just, you know, they like that I can go out there and I perform and they all, they all say I'm handsome. I'm handsome. And, I'm handsome and strong is what they all tell me. So. <laughs> oh shit. Your lady might have to go over there with her fist up and shit. Yeah. Huh? I mean, everybody says it. Girls, guys, everybody tells me that. So there's, there's such I, nice people, man. Uh, what, what would you say? Uh, one of my last questions, what would you say is your favorite part of it so far of Ryzen? <sighs> I mean, besides the fight, of course, because I know you just want to kill people. There's so many. There's just so many good things about it, man. Just the culture, the people, the fans, like the the whole the whole spectacle of the show, the rule set. I mean, there's just there's not one thing I could seriously pick that I would say is is better than awesome. It's just fucking coolest experience, you know. By every interview I've watched with you, you always express that passion, and we appreciate it as fans. Speaking for a lot of people, all my friends, it's it's great to see that because we don't. We don't see that all the time. I mean, you got the company guys in the UFC and Bellator and stuff, and and they say the, the company things, but you can tell when someone's exuding real passion, you know? Yeah, you know, for sure. It's real. Um, but I also wanted to – do you think that uh, – what will you do? Let's You're going to win the first fight, right? That's your plan. What will you do in between that and the possibly five or six hours later? Because Fuji TV has a six-hour time slot for this event. Yeah, man. Probably just go chill in the back, take a shower, get out of my sweaty, bloody clothes, eat some food, try to just relax, drink some water. 
then we'll get warmed up again and just go prepare and fucking get out there and win that title, man. Um, um, are you excited to be on an, you've never been on a New Year's Eve card or have you? No, my debut was on a New Year's Eve oh, card. Oh, 14, I fucking, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, which, yeah, Floyd Mayweather, yeah, I fucked that one up. Uh, yeah. Well, it's, I think, I don't think that that event had a six hour time slot on Fuji TV. I think that this is the most consecutive hours they've ever had on, on Fuji, you know, which is a, I mean, that's like our NBC or some shit, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I find that really crazy too. When you're walking around Japan or or just kind of traveling around, do you find that the fight culture is is more prevalent than in America? Very much the I wouldn't say fight culture, but just the martial art culture okay. for sure, and you like could, the warrior spirit, and also you know not just like you know the warrior spirit goes along as being like a protector and a guardian and, and like having compassion for your enemy, and you know love is your is your strength, not you know not fighting just like violence more somewhere like, you know, Juarez or something like that. You right, know? right. Right. Well, the reason I ask is because I know that they, they do the, the flyer, the flyers, right. They give people, and I've seen them in seven 11s and such in Japan. Oh yeah. Right. Which is really weird. Imagine walking into a seven 11 and you see a damn rising poster, you know, I mean, we yeah. got, even with the UFC, you go to a Buffalo wild wings and maybe on the fight night, you see the poster, but it seems like every yeah. image I'm seeing, and, and uh, also want to ask you, are you planning to go to the shop at all, right? The Ryzen shop? Dude, yeah, for sure. So I went last time. So it's really hard to because the only really time I got time to go is, you know, like during the week and, and I got to get like a bus taxi and, I, you know, I'm training and all that shit. So, yeah, I'm really going to make a, uh, a point to go there this year, uh, this time, this trip and, and get hooked up. So how, uh, what, when do you fly back? Like the second or the third or something? I uh, know the first. We fly back like that night. It was like six o'clock at night on the first. Wow! So the day right away you fly back, huh? Uh, yep. That's crazy because I, I I know I talked to some people on the Bellator Japan card and they're also flying back on the first. So they're oh not nice. yeah they're getting lucky in a sense. I told them all make sure you go to Rise and watch that shit because that's you know all respect to Bellator it's going to be a great night but we know what the main event is you know what I mean? Um, exactly. All right, so we went over the, the walkout music. You're not too worried about that. I know you're real serious. Do you have a preference on Pitbull or uh, Gustavo? Um, I think Pitbull, dude. I honestly want to fight Pitbull. I think that's, uh, you know, just being able to fight, you know, former world champion. And, uh, you know, his world ranks pretty high. Um, you know, and I think tactically that's a, that's a much easier fight. I think then yeah. Gustavo. Gustavo is kind of like a wild card. You know what I mean? He's kind of unpredictable, and uh, you range, know a lot of that. Range. Gustavo's rangy. It seems like his long limbs, and you know he's he does seem sure. unpredictable. And uh, do you, when you're when you were preparing, are you preparing for like you said all of these guys? Because all of them. Yeah. I mean, at at the, at the end of the day, I don't prepare for opponents. Right. I just. I just have uh, training partners that kind of mimic the, them as well. I trained for my performance and my, my perfection, what I do. Um, but yeah, as far as like training partners goes, yeah, I, I've had all, all three of those styles, you know, so and I'm ready forever. Have you heard anything about a reserve bout? I have not, no. But you know what I figured they would do is probably uh, like the Yachi and Hiroto. Um, on the Bellator card, I think would be make sense. But would but, that be fair? I don't know. What's fair? <laughs> well, I mean, fighting two days earlier, you know what I mean? And then you get to come fill in for a guy that's injured. Uh, you know, usually it's just not been rising staple to do that. You know, they always had the reserve bout. They had, uh, uh, geez, I can't remember who it was last time for the Horiguchi one, but he, they fought on the same night, you know? So I just I just wondered about that. But I know, I believe that they have a couple uh, bouts left to announce, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, to us, no. Um, but I mean, it could also be the loser, right? It could be if you if the loser doesn't get too hurt and the winner, you know, hurts himself. You just never know, right? Never um, know. All right, I got a couple fan questions for you. I'm gonna let you go, buddy. I know you got some, got to get some rest in. Yeah. Um, five. What's that? Got five minutes. All right, buddy. Uh, it ain't gonna take that long. Uh, what uh, what have you been listening to lately? Last time you mentioned a song and you said you'd kick anyone's ass if they talked shit about it. Oh, uh, man. So I've been on uh, Wheeler Walker uh, a lot lately. I don't know if you've heard of Wheeler Walker. Wheeler Walker Jr., yeah. 
yeah so been listening to a lot of wheeler hawker jr lately i don't know it's kind of been resonating eating pussy and kicking ass exactly eating pussy and kicking ass all of it. he's got a lot of good ones well right on johnny i appreciate you so much man and thank you so much for doing this and i'm forever grateful and humbled by by your appearances on this show you're always a good dude i wish you the best of luck man and i hope to speak afterwards Thanks, brother. Yep, absolutely. My pleasure, dude. Kick some ass yeah. out there, buddy. Good luck, huh? Yeah. Thanks, Doc. Uh, thank Bye. you.